Welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring! What flavor boobly? Oh, you that's peach boobly. Peach, peach boobly, boob- motherfucker! Boobly's peaches. Boob- <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, so childish. Um, I, I've got hi, hi Reese, hi Jesse. I've got this is what's the show? What's the name? I mean, we, these, this is already... Canadian politics is boring. I'm Reese, the Welsh one. This is Jesse, the Canadian one who's with me. He's the one with the Canadian accent. So you know he's Canadian. And Jesse, and we are doing election coverage. At... Election coverage. So this this episode, much like the last few episodes, are not what our show is normally like. We are doing election coverage, uh, which is just basically Reese tells me about the election, and I angrily rant at it. And then when people go, I like Jesse's rants, which is nice. It's a nice and thing that, to hear. Yeah, until they get bored of them but luckily we'll end can we, it can we do can we do like a, a processed little musical intro for jesse's rants right now can you say jesse's rants on top of me so, saying jesse's rants and we'll put a little music and and like echo and, over and in this episode we'll feature some of jesse's rants ready here we go three two one you have to say jesse's rants when i say that okay, okay ready three two one jesse's rants all right now we should say that like a little more evil like evilly here we go three two one jesse's, jesse's rants <laughs> I'm a sociopath. You don't know I'm evil. That's the character I was playing. You think I'm nice. I'm like Tom Cruise. Everyone thinks I'm nice, but I'm dead in the eyes. That's what um, Christian Bale when he played when he did American Psycho, yeah. he based the he based the the whole acting on t- Tom Cruise because he was really? like everyone says Tom Cruise is really nice, but you look in his eyes. And he's dead in the eyes. That's, I mean, I've that's heard, what Christian Bale used. I, I've, I've, I heard, I heard a, a, a on Dax Shepard's podcast, which I'd love to be a part of. Um, Armchair Expert. It's a fantastic show. You pitch into Dax Shepard. Sure, yeah, fuck it, Dax. If you're listening, get a hold of us. You know, yeah. yeah, with Jeff. If you're listening with Jeff Bezos and whoever <laughs> else we said. Anyway, he had an episode on with. Um, uh matt damon and they were talking about how celebrity status kind of affects you and and matt's was like i'm really quite thankful that i wasn't a celebrity as a kid or as a teenager because it can kind of get into your head and like really really affect like he you know matt grew up kind of poor or not maybe not grew up poor but when he was like trying to like become an actor and a screenwriter he was poor at that point in his life and so he knew the other side of the coin whereas people like you know, Tom Cruise have been kind of rich and a celebrity for like a lot, a long time of their, you know, a long time of their life. There we go, Jesse. There's, Most of their life. That's it. That's better. And yeah. it just kind of, it really fucks with your head. You know, it's like, yeah, he's he, perhaps he's sociopathic, but like, it's kind of like we, the people have kind of molded him into that. Yeah, yeah. You know? I've told you my Tom Cruise story on this podcast, haven't I? I don't know. Did I'm you? sure I've told you this. Time. You might have. I have my memory. When I watched him administer poor. first aid. That sounds... Tell it again. That sounds amazing. <laughs> so I, I did some work with the studio director of Top Gear on a different project that wasn't Top Gear. You, and he, you gave, were, and hold he on. gave me some free... You worked on Top Gear? No, I worked with the director on a different project, but he was the studio director of Top Gear. That's the pretty cool. And he gave me some free tickets to be in the studio oh my of God. the old Top you Gear You did tell show. me this, but tell it again. It's so good. And... We went down there in the airfield, and it, w- it was the episode where Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz were the stars in the really reasonably priced cars. <laughs> and it was as hot as it is in the studio now and very humid. Yeah. And I was right at the front. There was like one person in front of me, and they were there. You were in the audience? Do- in the audience, yeah. They okay. sat doing the, the interview, and the guy in front of me fainted, and I kind of supported him as he kind of went down and lowered him to the ground. And I looked up, and Tom Cruise just like magically leapt down and started like checking his pulse and administering first aid right in front of me like I, cpr at which point I was, on, was tom cruise doing cpr in front no of he you? was just like checking him over because he passed out he was just like checking his breathing and stuff oh, wow. tom cruise knew what exactly what to do and i was just stood there going oh my i at that point i was no use first of all i was helpful i was going i'm going to help this guy guy get him to the floor and then tom cruise stepped in and i just stood there going i'm watching tom cruise administer first aid <laughs> cameron diaz didn't budge she just yeah. she just watched him fall. Well, that sounds like Tom's a really nice guy. If that's he did he really he was you know he didn't even think he just acted going somebody needs help. So right, I, I mean that's that's a true you know yeah exactly. It's my only it's my only Tom Cruise story. That's anyway. a great Tom Cruise story though. Actually, someone I was in film school with worked on um, what's it what's the the World War Two film he was in where he was the planting the bomb. Oh yeah 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 um Valkyrie yeah and she was a she was German and I think she, was she was a runner on that film and he bought everyone iPads back when iPads were first came out. Oh wow! 
That's crazy. Which is nice. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. That's cool. Anyway, well, maybe, um, he's, maybe he's really nice guy. Maybe he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Kenny, I don't know. So this is our political uh, election coverage, talking about Tom Cruise. Yeah. So Cruise there stories. Um, Canada, small, small talk over. Small talk over. <laughs> Canada's recovery plan. Um, that's something we haven't done in a while. Small talk over. No, when we, when we, we used to start episodes, be like, small talk, time for small talk, small yeah, talk now. that's it's, enough small talk. That's enough small talk, yeah. Um, Canada's recovery plan, have you heard about it? Have you seen the picture? Is this a new thing? So this is the Conservatives' platform for for being elected. It's called Canada's Recovery Plan, and I'm going to show you a picture. Oh, it's That's good. the front cover. I've seen that picture uh, with Aaron O'Toole on it with his fucking massive guns. Jesus Christ. Is that Aaron O'Toole? It is Aaron O'Toole. He's got and fucking he's guns, He's been running. And Look at his guns. He's like ex-military, so he probably knows how to train. But um, it looks Those like... massive biceps. It looks like the cons- GQ said no to the Conservatives, so they said, fine, we'll make our own health magazine or whatever. Oh, men's man. magazine. It looks like the front cover. It's like if, if he was going to be on front cover of Men's Health or GQ. Oh, magazine. There's a magazine called Canada's Recovery. No, that's plan. that's the front cover of their plan for their election pitch. Oh, I literally thought it was a magazine cover. No, no, no. They just made it look like a magazine cover because because my magazines were saying no to that. I imagine that GQ said because um, Jug, uh, Jugmeet Singh's been on the front cover of GQ and was called one of the best dressed politicians in the world. Oh, he's pretty well and, dressed. And then Aaron O'Toole. And he's, a sh- like, he's a sharp fucking dresser. I'll he say. is a very yeah, sharp yeah. dresser. But then Aaron O'Toole isn't. Um, and wasn't featured on any of these magazines, so they just made their own and was like, "This is it." And That's it, fucking hilarious. Like, You've seen me wearing suits, but now I'm wearing a Wait, t-shirt. Oh my god! Hold on, can I? Let me see it again. Oh, Reese, you're good at Photoshop. Can you take that and turn it into Banana Bread Monthly? Yes. <laughs> my top five banana bread recipes with Aaron. <laughs> So he's got Canada's recovery plan, recover a million jobs, new anti-corruption law, Canada's mental health action plan, protect something, balancing the budget. So, hold on, did you say protect something? I can't, the, the text is too small. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, protect, that was literally one of the things. Protect that your they... penis from STDs, I imagine. <laughs> um, Aaron O'Toole knows best. Exactly. But, um, and, and to be fair, actually, there was... As much as as uh, I, I try, I'm trying to. You, as you know, I try to take a balanced view. I try and stay. Them talking about important issues that Canadians currently care about does not mean they're going to do it. So there's a PD. You know, I know. It just means they they've, they've done they've, their research as to what people are currently talking this about. Is, That's it. This is a 83 page PDF about what they will do to the country that they got someone in India to write for three dollars an hour. Yeah, they they, they blasted it on Fiverr. Um, <laughs> but so, so they've done I'm honest to god i'm not surprised if that's if that actually yeah, happened. Also for, hello we're looking for someone but also they've got um it, it's it's very but also some some of the stuff on there like they said we're going to build a million new homes now which is a really ambitious thing and a great thing to say and what they didn't say is these million new homes are going to be condos for the super rich yeah well you, you don't it doesn't, it doesn't say social houses is a million and then and then trudeau has come back canada out canada has this really really and i guess canada's not the only country that does that we have a, we have a barrier head in the sand policy when it comes to the the homeless and it comes to the poor we do we do we really do we have a if we do this we will attract more rich people and we will push more poor people out and we don't care where the poor people go but as long as they're not here we're happy and that's it's ugh. anyway okay, yeah i mean, started well, I mean, on that. I mean and, uh, my, this is my favorite photo look at that he literally is oh. looking into the camera saying i'm gonna have sex with he you. looks like colin mockery from whose line is it anyway he doesn't look like Colin Mockery from Moose A little bit. From He's got a smartwatch on. All right, yeah. Colin um, would never be cut down with a smartwatch. No, exactly. Um, but also the other thing, I mean, there's some of the, what he had is then Trudeau came out shortly after saying, well, we're going to build one, 1. 1.4 million homes. So it's kind of, they, they, the, the one thing they did say in there, and again, this is based, this is something they say, and it's not necessarily, necessarily saying it's something they'll do, was that on the board of... I, big, don't, I don't, just on the side, I don't know if we need more homes as much as we need we do affordable homes. No, the, the problem is there's a shortage of homes, and that's why the prices are so high. This is supply and demand. Oh, is that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, but they do need more affordable homes. It's pointless building more expensive homes. Mm. Um, but the um, which I mean, if the market is currently what it is, then we'll just yeah. build more expensive homes because that's what we can. You know. Anyway, we'll, the, the one the one thing that I thought was a good policy, and again, whether they do it or not is another thing, was that big corporations on the board of a big corporation there should be a representative of employees on there to help them make decisions say that again so employees should elect a representative say amazon was operating or amazon canada yeah they would have to elect an employee who would sit on the board as the representative of employees they do it's called unions no but they don't get a table a seat at the table unions 
They definitely have a voice. That's they have for a voice, sure. but they don't, they don't actually, they're actually involved actively in the board's decision-making processes. I don't know if that's true. I have a friend who, who runs a union, and like they're very active in the... It doesn't co- happen in the UK. Maybe it does. What's that coming down the driveway, Reese? It's me, with a fresh delivery from the ad man. Come oh my smell gosh. it. I will come smell it. I love how your ads smell. Oh, golly, it's oh, fresh. We gotta stuff it in my face. Ah, oh, oh, fresh Smack ads. me in the face with it. Oh, oh, yeah, just the way I like it, ads. Somebody pointed out, some eagle-eyed person pointed out okay. that let me show you this so they they're basically saying that um there's it, that there's there's a hidden and this could be a coincidence but they're saying that there is a, a potentially a hidden uh white supremacy message oh my god <laughs> yeah, one of the things and that this is um do, who who's okay what can you go into depth here this is so i'm gonna go into this now i'm just bringing up the links so they posted uh they posted something that said secure jobs, secure accountability, secure mental health, secure the country, secure the our economy. And it's basically that adds up to 14 words and 88 characters. And if you're someone who um, follows uh, what the far right is up to, I don't know if you do. I don't. But um, Just what you tell me. 14 words is a reference to the most popular white supremacist slogan, which is, I'm not going to say it because they, so basically it's a slogan talking about securing the future. And and it's made up of 14 words and 88 characters. And what you'll see is people will hi, people will show the symbol, like the number 14, they'll get a tattoo that says 14. And the secret code, the other far-right supremacists would know. Wow, really? Or, oh, look, there's a number 14 on there. So the, the, the in this 14 words, they actually say secure uh, secure the existence for our people and a future for white children. And so it's the same word in the 14 words, and then it's also in the same thing they posted. I mean, I got to say, that's, that's pretty coincidental. But like, if it's 88 characters and 14 words with the word secure in it, well, okay. secure the future is the, is their main tagline, right? And then within this statement, it lines up to. I mean, you know, it could be. So could it, maybe some white supremacist came. This like, ah ha ha! I'll, I'll make this slogan, and no one will fucking know. Which, which you, you could you could say care, is you could say is like, like a massive conspiracy and, and to ridiculous. Do what, though? To do and what? What's the angle here? Honestly, <laughs> in my head, the most reasonable explanation is Aaron, Aaron O'Toole's voting record is very liberal. He's. Uh, if you look as at what he if, used to vote liberal no no as in like he voted like he didn't vote he's not a he's not your kind of iconic conservative voter he was supportive of gay marriage and he he's kind of been very much of a middle of the road conservative in terms of his views he's not a far right oh, um, conservative he's an urban okay. conservative he's, he's a very kind of metropolitan kind of um, okay that's that's fair. liberal yeah. um conservative sorry and makes me think that maybe it went in maybe there's someone in his team who is and uh, well, that and they did this as a secret like, surprise. Me. <laughs> it's a secret like, thing that seems like plausible. Oh, that's In which funny. case, I don't know whether that's good or or bad or better or worse. I have no idea what. I that think means. it's just funny. Honestly, but I don't think fact- it's like it's not going to have an impact on anything. It's just it's someone figuring out that someone may have like it's just it's this is I mean this is not going to. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it is it's ridiculous. It's like zero impact on anything. But it, it, a lot of people say it is a dog whistle so that people on the far right are going to vote for him. That it was like kind of a, oh, they, they're talking the talk of being in the middle of the road and we've got these kind of I don't think very have, similar I don't think liberal policies. I don't think we have enough people on the far extremist right to actually make an impact. Thank God. I don't. And also, they can't count, so they don't know how many words there are anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I almost spit out my buble, my, so pe- if my you are on the speeches fu- on the microphone. If you're from the far right and you can count, um, send us an email. No. Maybe even send us two emails. Oh, um, God. Uh, angrily, just to prove that you can count. Just to prove you can count. <laughs> Up to two. This is a test. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that um, crows can only count to three? And if you if you got if you're a farmer, the fact that crows can count at all is kind of mind mind blowing. I'm not like if if you're a farmer, fuck that. Well, if you're a farmer, then I think this is my understanding is that uh, cows, crows, they you if you want to shoot them uh, to get rid of them because they're eating your crops, um, not for fun, um, (laughs) you have to have three people with guns in the field, um, 
like not doing like looking like they're going to shoot but looking the other way and the crows think they're safe and then you have a fourth person actually shooting the crows and they can't work out where it's coming from because they can see three people with guns not shooting anyone it sounds bizarre but a farmer once told it to me and i don't know i still can't work out whether he was winding me up yeah, that doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> in insane. my head, it made sense, and then I vocalize, and I feel like a right dick. <laughs> it's me accusing far right people of not being able to count when I, I'm my my, some my farmer, limited. Some farmer thought they were very funny that day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Got another one. Can't believe that urban person believed my uh, my crow story. <laughs> If 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 you know anything about crows and them putting, a, putting an ad in the local paper, need four men with shotguns. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, anyway, who cool. can count really well? This has been fun. I've had a good time. Yeah, yay! Fun things are fun. Do you know what else what is fun? We, what um, bouncy castles? Do you know what isn't fun? Uh, what rain made of knives? <laughs> <laughs> what if you combine the two? Uh, Oh, a bouncy castle, and then it rains in a knives, of knives. And it rains yeah. knives, and yeah. it'd get pretty messy real quick if that people were in the bouncy castle. I had a bouncy castle for my tenth birthday, uh, rented. It was great. How did that go? Good. Tell us about it. It turned up early. I had a good four hours on it before the party started, and then you were exhausted. And then I had another and... two hours for the party, and then I bounced on it until uh, they came to pick it up. It does sound pretty fun recently. If, if, you're, ever, if you're ever feeling down, I, I recommend rent a bouncy castle for yourself. Even if you're a if it's just you, man. Yeah, yeah, just, just get it and just spend all day on the bouncy castle. Just, I mean, I, I would do that. Honestly. If I, would, I would do that if you did that. I, like, I think I, I would, like, if we that should be a, That should be a government <laughs> mental health service. Is like, if you just, just, I, I would t- never I would never just buy a bouncy castle for myself. Okay, there's a weird... R- rent a big one for the day. I get Okay, hold on. I This has got to be another psychological... Um, phenomenon where if you have someone else do the same thing as you it's amazing how much bizarre shit you would do that you would never do by yourself never okay it's like being it's like just one other person who wants to do the same crazy thing as you suddenly validates it and it's a good idea and it's okay even if it's still like you know it's still kind of crazy it's like you, you for instance if you're like hey jesse Let's let's rent a bouncy castle, you and I, and put it in the parking lot of you know of our of our offices and just spend all day in it. I would I would one hundred percent agree. And would assign this to do this. Fuck off to everybody else. Well, and just, yeah, just exactly. For us. Just just for us. Yeah, I would do that in a heartbeat. I would, but I would never rent a basic bouncy castle for myself for my own backyard and just be in it on my own. That would seem ridiculous. And I would. Stupid. Yeah, of course you would. Okay, yeah. So that's. I wouldn't. I wouldn't rule it out as an actual. <laughs> <laughs> what did we talk about this episode again? What were uh, we? the conservatives' plan <laughs> they came up with to right. secure with the future for white children? If oh, we, oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. that whole thing. Um, I, I forgot about it already. It was so insignificant. Yeah, um, I just thought it was a quirky thing to talk about that happened. It was a quirky thing to talk about that happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it a dog whistle? Is it a coincidence? Is it just some naughty person in their campaign? Um, doing horrible things <laughs> who knows um who cares <laughs> i care i think yeah, it's quite a big I deal for, i i worry you don't i do worry about whether or not the the, the These white supremacists in the camp. you worry about what oh whether, whether they're white supremacists in their corner okay i see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. that makes much more sense rather rather than worry about whether or not their one of their political essays was was uh an anagram for Oh, just, yeah, just a reference. That's not really worrying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the person who did right, it, yeah, if okay, they that did makes, intend that makes more sense, yeah, okay. <laughs> knowing that they, that if the election goes the way of the conservatives, that they would be then in a senior, <laughs> senior position. Sort of, right, yeah, okay. That's what, that's, Cackling that's what in the corner. <laughs> Is that how white supremacists cackle? No, they, they, I don't know, they just, I don't think they can laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, um, this has been a weird episode. It's been a weird episode. So, um, and don't forget, like, we so, start so, with start with white supremacists and ends with bouncy castles. Yeah, well, it's all it's all linked. <laughs> um, so, um, if uh, if if and it, don't forget, September the twentieth live coverage. We'll put out YouTube links uh, or so, whatever. We don't know if it's going to be YouTube. It's whatever. We're, I think YouTube's bad. Well, whatever. We're we're working with our network right what now. What is on, a Twitch? We're, we're working with our network right now to see uh, what platform we will be using. Um, but we'll let you know. We'll let you know. And it's like it's not like you know we'll talk about 
a brand new flat platform that's just come out a week before that no one knows how to use. It's going to be like something everyone's familiar about. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. The, the idea is that it's going to be a platform that is easy and accept, accessible and free. I like you too, because chances are you've got the app on your TV, on your smart TV. So you can actually watch no, our, put us on the big screen, you can put us on the big screen yeah. and watch our election coverage. And if it's as hot as this, we'll just watch us sweat. And right. Dehydrate slowly. Well, I won't even wear anti sprint that day. No, no, just exactly. For, just for you, listener. Exactly. So wonderful time had by all. Um, it's goodbye. Yep. Wait, hold on. Call to action. A bu- render bouncy castle just for yourself. Call, hold on. Call to action. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts that has to do with bouncy castles and or thunderstorms with knives. Yeah, it's as fun as a bouncy castle in a thunderstorm with knives. So you can't leave that one. Reese came up with that one right now. That gem. Yeah, that's. You look really distracted right now. I'm not distracted. I'm just so warm. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome my, to Canada. My, uh, Canada's supposed to be cold. I'm disappointed in you, Canada. I was looking for. I love cold weather. I love cold weather. Oh, you're one of those fucking people. It's great. You're a weirdo. Well, the thing is, if you live somewhere cold, you can just put more layers on. If you yeah, live somewhere hot, you have to peel your skin off. <laughs> it's fucking disgusting. Jesus Christ. With a potato peeler. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, goodbye. Go, That's uh, gross. That's too much for me. The air on my muscles is cooling. <laughs> I'm exposed to gross. Oh my god. <laughs> Bye. Oh my god.